You're listening to the Travel to Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast. Welcome to this the second episode of the Travel to Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast. The podcast that takes you on a journey through one of Europe's most underrated countries. I'm David. And I'm Tamara and we are excited to take you on a journey to this beautiful, heart-shaped country located in the middle of the Western Balkans. Our goal is to introduce you to the fantastic nature, stunning architecture, amazing food, welcoming culture and complex but very interesting history of this much misunderstood country. Through our podcast episodes, we'll be sharing insider tips on where you should go, what you should see, do and eat when you get here. Whether you're planning a trip or just curious about this hidden gem, we've got you covered. So join us as we explore the beauty and wonders of Bosnia and Herzegovina one episode at a time. Today we look at how to get here, what you need for your visa or visa requirements, currency consideration, hiring a car, using a buses or trains, and I will teach you a useful phrase at the end of this podcast. Well, as we record this podcast, it's wet and miserable outside, and it wasn't yesterday because we were having the 1st of May celebrations. That's very important for you guys, isn't it? 1st of May. Yes, it is. It's our, it's our rest day. It's a worker's day, and uh, we usually celebrate it by going somewhere to the nature, and we usually do a barbecue. We drink a lot of beer kids have fun so it's it's like a family went we had uh, uh, a small barbecue outside which is very very tasty and it was nice because it was the first really nice sunny day that we've been able to sit out in the balcony years ago though did you just used to do family things or like small ones like we did yesterday or was it a bigger affair but uh, you do the family thing like together kids do maybe up until they're 16 or 17 and then kids usually go out and celebrate first of May with their fr- own friends. Does that mean going out and getting outrageously drunk? Yes, in the nature. <laughs> but it's usually, uh, it's like a family gathering. It's like getting, uh, everybody's there, you know, resting. It's usually uh, two days, first and the second May is usually a holiday, so people don't have to work. And then maybe some people also take this opportunity to go somewhere away, like Austria or somewhere nearby or maybe to the sea coast or but most of the people celebrate with the barbecue outside well we had a beautiful day yesterday okay let's get back to what the podcast is about we're going to look at some things that you need to know before getting there and we haven't really scripted this up we've just got some notes which Tamara and I will go through and David will explain to you more because I don't really understand the rules how to get visa to get to this country okay let's start off with the first one, it's advisable that you check online to see what visa is available for your particular citizenship. I did some research online and there's, I think Ukrainians can come for 10 days. Most Europeans and North Americans can come for... I don't think Ukrainians, 90? it's two months visa. Two months, is it? Two months visa and the rest is uh, Europe and other countries. Yeah. is 90 days visa. Yeah, the, Euro- the Europeans have a 90 day uh, visa and I think people from North America as well. But you can see already that the country has different rules for different parts of the world. So so the best thing would be to check the website and yeah. we'll provide provide. In- yeah, we'll put the link in, in the bottom for, the for, wh- for where you go. Right. When you uh, come across the border, you're going to get a simple, well, let's say you, you don't need a visa. So let's look at, for this example, people from uh, Northern Europe, Brits, French, Germans, Spaniards, etc. When you come across the border, you're going to get a simple stamp in your passport, right? That starts your 90 days. Which says entering the country. Yeah, absolutely. And if you don't get a stamp, please do remember that your passport has been scanned by the border police, right? Your entry has been logged. Yes, and you will be in the system for the next six months. So we learned that as well. So (laughs) Bosnia and Herzegovina has a 90-day stay in any 180-day tourist visa now a lot of people get confused by that i got confused by that tamara was up until recently confused i'm still it. confused by still that confused. confused i wouldn't call it a visa i would just call it a stay because so, it's it's not like a classical visa like you get like this huge sticker where it tells you like you know how long you can stay it's just a stamp and they know when did you enter when did you enter and then from that day you can stay 90 days that's right now it doesn't mean that after 90 days in the country you can exit and re-enter for another stay when i went to visit my daughter many years ago in hong kong that's what she used to do she used to get to the end of her 90 days and she would leave hong kong and then she'd come back into hong kong and the whole thing 
would start again. And that was acceptable to Hong Kong. It is not acceptable to Bosnia and Herzegovina. So to recap, you cannot stay here for three months and then go out for a day and then come back and stay another three months. No. So, what so it you is, explain yeah, so how what it works. Is, what you need to do is when you're calculating your visit here is look at the first day that you arrived, right? And then go to your calendar or whatever and then count 180 days further on, right? So like if you came on the 1st of May, that'd be May, June, July. That'd be say like the 1st of August would be the end of your 90 days. Now, in that 180 days, you can be in this country for 90 days, right? What happens after 180 days? Then it starts all over again. So if you were to say in that 180 days, right, you were a day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out for 90 days, that's your 90 days in 180. If you want to come and do like a long tour, slow tourism of the country. Then or if you, you want to stay here as a nomad. Yeah, as a nomad, then you've got 90 days and that is then finished. And you've got to leave 90 days until that 180 days is completed. So you would come in and go out. And a lot of people actually... And how many months is 180 days? It's six. So basically it's a three months within six months period. Absolutely. So I, I've heard of some nomads that come like to the Balkans or come to Bosnia and Herzegovina, stay 90 days and they go to Montenegro for 90 days and then they come back again. The, the Montenegro, Serbia has the same rule as well. I'm not sure about Croatia because Croatia is now is in European Union. But this is European Union law. It this is. is their law. Yeah, it's, it's, it's their law, basically. Except, yeah, it gets very complicated because then there's the Schengen law now, which means that you can only enter the Schengen area for 90 days, not any country within it. It's all complicated. But all I would like to say is it's 90 days within any 180 days. If you want to stay longer, we're going to put a link in the show notes because you need then to check with the website of the Service for Foreigners and they'll tell you whether you can stay six months, whether you're able to stay a year. But there's, there's lots of there rules there. There are different types of visa. Maybe you can get visa to work here for one year. Maybe you're going to get married with a local girl or a guy. Then you apply differently to stay here for a long term. Or you might or, buy property. Or you might buy a property. You're also allowed to stay here. But you have to go through a certain procedure. And we are going to leave the link underneath this. In the show notes. In the show notes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right, that's that. Now, how to get here? Well... I was going to call this podcast not trains, but planes and automobiles, because there was a film, wasn't there? Do you remember? Trains, planes and automobiles. But we're going to look at flights, first of all. There are, in the country, there are airports in Banja Luka, Tuzla, Mostar, and of course, the capital, Sarajevo. If you're into cheap flights, I call them bucket flights. And for this country, those uh, air carriers are based on two, which is Wizz Air and Ryanair. We here, where we live, we're right under the flight path for Banja Luka Airport, aren't we? Yes. So we get to see Wiz and Ryanair. Yes, they're up. flying above our house. Absolutely. <laughs> so we can see them. So you can fly into Banja Luka, Tusla and Mostar, and I think one or two flights into Sarajevo using Wiz Air and Ryanair. So they'll come in. Probably. And Sarajevo is also very specific because it's in a, like... In a big bowl, isn't it? It's surrounded a, by mountains. It's in a big bowl surrounded by mi- b- mountains. So sometimes it's very hard for planes to land because they have a lot of fog and mist. other mist. Yeah. Yes, they have delayed. They have they have delayed flights and everything. But uh, it doesn't matter. It's not far away from Banja Luka. Not at all. You can also land in Zagreb, which takes most international airlines now, and then progress by road, that's by car or bus, uh, into the country. And there's also another option that not a lot of people are aware of, and that is that you can fly to Belgrade, right? So if you, like, we know of a lot of people that come from Australia, right? They fly Air Serbia from, I think, Dubai. They fly to Dubai where they connect with Air Serbia, then Air yes, Serbia brings them to Yes, and there's a direct flight from New York to Belgrade as well so, during the season. So you can end in Belgrade, and then I don't know what day or maybe two days of the week it is, but then there is a flight that links Belgrade to Banja Luka. So that's another way that you can get into the country. Yes, it air. might be a little bit more expensive and maybe not uh, like a time-friendly, but you can also explore that option. So that's that's flights coming into the country. And all the airports are modern and professionally run, so there's no real issues. So the roads, there are main road routes into the country from neighbouring Croatia, Serbia and Montenegro, and we'll talk about road travel a little bit later on. 
the trains. Now, I have a friend oh, called Di, and Di likes to travel by train. He has one of these super duper interna- interrail passes, right? Which apparently, I've never used one. I really would like to. They are like super cool. You pay one price, and I think you have two or three months, and you can travel on nearly every single train route in Europe okay. with this one with this one ticket. Di is going to be landing, haha, <laughs> no, coming to us very soon, but he's going to take the train into Zagreb. And for the leg from uh, Vienna down into Zagreb, his ticket actually gives him first class travel, which is cool. So if you're thinking about... I wondered about, how much is that ticket? Yeah, we're going to find out. But when you get to Zagreb, that's it. When you get to Belgrade, that's it. There are no real running train lines. That you in, can take all the way to Bosnia and Herzegovina. No, the only train lines that are about, we'll talk about in a minute, because there are a few within the country. So that's the overview for trains. So the thing now we want to talk about is the money. And people do get confused with this as well. The currency here is the convertible mark. Yes, but we also recognize euros and yeah, other currencies. Yeah. There are places in the country that will accept euro, but please don't take this for granted. Like in our local town, there are signs up at the shop saying we don't take euros. Yeah. So be aware of that. But you can exchange uh, euros. So we have a lot of exchange offices You can exchange them there with a very, very little interest rate. And also you can change them in the banks, but I think banks take a little bit more of interest rate. But the euro is pretty stable here. And uh, when you convert the marks to the euros, so like you go one to two or 1.95. If you say two to one, it's about, it's, it's a good guide, isn't it? There are ATMs, cash machines now almost everywhere. So you can use your credit. Maybe not in some isolated well, area, yeah, it, or, like if you go to the villages and things like that. But in, mo- in most towns, I would say it is there now. Yes, and in the most restaurants and shops now, you can pay with a credit card or with a normal like uh, cash card. Yeah, and you can they, they have, uh, what is it called? Tap to go, yes. where you can tap your, your card and it takes it off. So there are uh, ATMs everywhere. Yeah. They have a uh, like English language on the ATMs, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure if they have... Yeah, they have English, German, Spanish. You know, it's easier for me to use English. Same on my computer. I, I always use English instead of local language. So be aware there are bank charges at the Bosnia end and your home country end. I, I know this very well. And so please check what you see on the screen as you withdraw your money to avoid a shock at the end of the month. Um, I normally get shocked when I go to Zagreb because the markup there is like phenomenal. It's like 10%. And sometimes I think, oh, is there any way that I could just buy it straight from the shop instead of taking it out of the machine? As Tamara says, the ATMs offer you a choice of languages. There's only like four, but English is the main one that foreigners use. So if you have basic English, you should be all right. But But uh, overall, my conclusion is the best thing is to bring cash with you. And uh, the best thing to, to bring is euros. And you can exchange them here, even though legally you cannot pay it in euros, but I'm sure that some restaurants will take it as well. Or you can just change them in exchange offices. The exchange rate is quite good. But here's the big one when it comes to money. And you need to to remember this. The convertible mark cannot be exchanged at banks outside the country. So be aware of that. I think you might be able to get away with it a little bit in Serbia, but other countries, it's a worthless currency outside. So what Tam said is right. When you've got your convertible marks, when you're going to leave the country and you say maybe you have a lot of them, best thing is to go to a, a money exchange or to a bank and then get that converted into the next currency that you're going to use. Right. So if you're going back to England, you must probably be able to get some pounds. If you're moving on to the EU, Yes, uh, so this euros. convertible marks or uh, Bosnian mark is not a valid currency anywhere outside of the country, unfortunately. Yeah. But but it is what it is. It is, yeah. I was going to say steuer to you, but you're going to have a useful yes. phrase. And before you know. convertible marks, we used to use Do- Deutsch marks here as a you see those crafty Germans dinners, the and then the Deutsch marks, and then we, they changed after the war. They those, changed to the convertible yeah. marks. <laughs> those crafty Germans left them up. Really? I think a lot of Germans miss it as well. Right. Let's go on to traveling around in the country. And I said earlier on about trains that there's not much in the way of trains. Right. The rail network in Bosnia is minuscule. It is tiny. Where we are in the north of the country, in the Republic of Srpska, and we're not looking at freight. We're just looking at passenger trains here, right? There is one train line open and it goes from Novigrad to Doboj via Banja Luka, right? I really want to go on that 
you know, do I, I think a podcast and just going on there would be great because Tam and I were just like really captivated by watching um, a documentary of a train ride in Switzerland. I don't think the I don't think the Novigrad to Doboy one is anything like that though. So that's it. In the Federation, they used to have a train that used to go from Banja Luka to Sarajevo. It was a brand new, I think, uh, Japanese. Japanese. A uh, donation from uh, Japan or China, I'm not quite sure. Japan was, yeah. It used to work and it was very good. It had a Wi-Fi, like it was brand new, but they stopped that. Yeah, so yeah. you can't do Banja Luka to, um, to Sarajevo. And I think when I first came here back in 1998, there was a train running to Zagreb from Banja Luka, wasn't there? Yes, but that hasn't been on, that hasn't been on for, for years. But in the other part of the country, the other entity, and in a future podcast, We'll try and explain what the, the two entities are. But at the moment, in the other entity, it's called the Federation. There are some lines open between towns down there. But having said all that, there is a train line that is open between Sarajevo and Mostar. And if you're coming to visit, you should try and factor that in because it is one of the notable train trips to take in the world. It goes through amazing landscapes. And as I say, it's a must see. And Tam and I have been watching this, or we watched one episode, but I think there's a whole series on a German TV channel about train journeys. And I'm sure it's on there. All you've got to do is type in Sarajevo to Mostar train trip in your browser of choice, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, the main way to get around, as Tamara said, is by road. And that's either cars or buses. I think I would suggest if you are coming for a long, longer stay, like seven to ten days here to visit, you definitely should rent a car. Yeah. That's my personal Well, if your budget can handle it. If you're a backpacker, yes. then it's, it's the bus is the but way to go. it's not like you, you can find still some good deals. Right. So you've got your car and uh, you come in. Please make sure before you arrive in Bosnia-Herzegovina that you check with your insurance company in the country that you're leaving, that you're going to be covered here. You need a green card for that. I think, yeah, some, some countries now no longer need a green card, but I think in the main it is a yes. green card. We don't need any more green card when we go outside of Bosnia and Herzegovina. If you, come in, if you come into the country and the border police say you need a green card, I think you're going to pay quite a lot for it. So it's better to do it at home, at home before you come. So you will need a green card to enter Bosnia and Herzegovina. Right. There are two types of roads. Three types of roads, actually. There's ones in villages, which we're not going to talk about. Single track roads where you keep pausing to let the tractor go past. They can be asphalted or not. Not yet. They're quite enjoyable, actually. They're quite adventurous. The scenery is really nice. <laughs> but the roads but are... But you need a kind of higher car because there's a lot of holes in the oh, yeah. roads. No sports cars here. You'll rip the, the no bottom out of your car. car yeah. So we have a small but ever-growing high-quality motorwork network, a motorway network. And you'll know when you're coming near a motorway or directions to a motorway because the roadsides are, road signs are in green. Yes, same like anywhere else in the yeah. world. But the highways in Bosnia-Herzegovina are all toll roads. So you must be... They're not expensive by European standards. Standards, yes. But they, you will do that. So You will have to pay. And they take cards as well they so do you don't have to have a cash so when you enter the highway and get onto that toll road there'll be an automatic machine which has a ticket waiting for you so all you have to do is take the ticket out right yes and me poor me i always have problem grabbing the ticket because i'm a, such a short person tiny. i'm tiny so i have to get out of the car but basically to pick up my ticket when when How you terrible. when you Take your ticket out of the machine, you'll notice two things happen. One, there's a light, there's a, like a display in front of you, which will have your car registration number, and the barrier lifts. Don't panic. The barrier will not go down until, until you've passed it the barrier. It has a sensor, yes, until you pass the thing. When and you, you can always uh, press a, a panic button, and then somebody will come and help you out if you have any problems. But you have to co consider this thing, because uh, highways are, are uh, still in building. There is no shops or rest, they are rest points, but there's no shops or restaurants there. So you have to consider, you know, if you're going from Banja Luka to Sarajevo, the part of the road, you'll have to drive two hours. So you have to make sure you have enough water, you have a sandwich, fuel, uh, fuel because there's no pump stations or anything. And the reason why there's no pump stations or restaurants, because when they finish the highways, they, they, then they're going to have a like a, a, tender, for who's a, do a it. tender who's going to do it and who's going to get these things. So, so at the moment, you have to be very careful. Always have enough water and food. They have some uh, like a plastic toilets. Yeah, the they port, have toilets. Portal. 
Okay. <laughs> English is my second but language, by the way. You must take your own. Take but up, yes, please. Take your own toilet paper. Please consider, and you cannot. I mean, obviously, you can exit the highway. You know, at different uh, exit points, but there's no restaurants, there's no kiosks, there's no nothing. So you have to make sure you have enough water, especially if you travel with small children. You know, you want to make sure you have some food and uh, toto. Yeah, that's it. When you get to the exit point, you're leaving the motorway, the highway. Then you'll find a manned. Uh, booth where you pay now you uh, when you get there again you'll look at the display and it will tell you exactly how much it is in convertible marks right and i think sometimes in euros you can pay in cash or you can use your credit and credit debit card so he or she will just tap it on the machine and you also yes, you don't need your pin number and you also get uh, a receipt for your toll payment otherwise you're going to travel around bosnia and herzegovina on main roads all the main roads are signed in with yellow signs and one thing you'll notice straight away is each place each destination each instruction is in two scripts one latin and the the other one one is cyrillic Cyrillic, so which is kind of looks like russian yeah and that there's a reason behind that and we'll cover that in another podcast tamara mentioned though one of the if you don't have a car and i think this applies to backpackers or people that like to uh, travel on a very very tight budget there are bus services between all the cities, the towns, and even most of the rural villages, right? There are buses everywhere. Yes, we have a good buses connection. The buses, right, range from, and this is great, when you go to a, when you go to a main town bus station, you'll say, what? There are ultra-luxurious modern uh, buses that are comfortable, they have air conditioning, onboard toilets, and then... You'll notice. And usually these buses, they take you, we have like a long route from here. So you can take a bus to München or Frankfurt or anywhere, actually anywhere in Europe. And these buses are really, really good. And next to them is at the other end of the scale. You'll see a small 15-seater combi. It's like a, yeah, it's like a... The one that you take to Zagreb. Yeah, it's, it's tiny and there are bits falling off it. And it looks pretty drab. So you can go from ultra luxury uh, down to these small so eight seater combis. I wouldn't be drinking any beer if you would travel by the bus. No. Around here. Uh, so <laughs> it is every, but everywhere it, the, the bus prices are very reasonable. Most of the services, now this depends on the length of the trip and the time, the duration of the trip. Uh, they factor in breaks so you can stretch your legs and have a comfort break. And for those that still smoke, uh, have a cigarette. So what I would look at is the bus is not going to go from point A to point B necessarily without stopping. There yes. will be some stops uh, along the way. When you purchase your ticket, uh, especially at bus stations, you'll notice on your ticket that there is a seat number, right? This is not necessarily going to be a hard and fast rule. I've traveled a lot by bus and my experience is you sit... Nobody obeys the rules. No, so you sit where you sit, but be prepared that one day, like I have twice in all the time I've been here, somebody insists on sitting in the number, oh, the number on, yes. on, on, their, on their ticket. And so uh, usually if the bus is not full, then you can change a seat, you can take two seats, you know, you can move around and change because sometimes the buses are not full and there's lots of space. So Yeah, you can stretch out. You can stretch then... out, you know, change a seat and things like that. Nobody will care about it. Now, if you're going to go and take a bus in the rural areas, the bus is going to stop more than you would think because not every village, not every place where people come from has a bus stop and they will ask the driver to stop. So you could be in the middle of no, and trust me, it's an experience. The bus will stop and you look around and you can't see a house. You can't see a road. You can't see a track. And a little old lady with 10 bags of shopping (laughs) will get off and just start walking off through a field, right? So be aware of that and don't get shocked at all. And uh, finally, we're going to talk about and I think Tam's right here. If your budget allows it, hire a car. If you want to have a stress-free holiday, you know, at your own leisure to enjoy the scenery and to travel wherever you want, if you want to change your plans and everything, I think the best thing to have is to hire a car. I agree with you. Now, most hire car companies in the country are reliable and professional, but as everywhere in the world, there are some cowboys. We're not going to tell you about a cowboy instance that we yes we had a one we had one bad we had experience had, with our guests and we had to help them out we have to help them out and uh, everything turned out okay at the end but if you see just to be aware if you see a really ridiculously cheap price on internet that you can rent a car in Bosnia for i don't know 20 or 30 euros a day 
Be aware. Be aware that could be a scam. The daily rates, though, and you have to admit this, the daily rates, the normal daily rates at the moment are competitive, aren't they? They're not hugely expensive. Well, 50, 60 euros, depending on what card you want. Absolutely. So check carefully that your chosen provider can do what you want. If you want, especially if you're going from one part of Bosnia to the other, leaving and going on, can they actually provide you uh, the car at your start point where you can leave it at, at, the, at the exit points. point? Some companies provide that, obviously, with the extra charge because they have to come and pick up the car. But uh, you have to check that out with the, you, you know, with the company. And another thing that you should consider during the season here It's very hard to find to hire a car, so you have to do that in advance. So yeah. if you are, so the season is usually from June to September or from June to end of August. So in this period, uh, you, you are better off if you reserve your car month or two months in advance before you before, before you're coming Absolutely. to, to Bosnia and Herzegovina because we know there's a hard. You know, it's really, really hard to, to hire a car. Also be aware, another thing that I have to stress out is uh, lots of people are renting a cars, cars on black, which is fine. It's much cheaper. But if you get in an accident, then you are in real trouble. So Absolutely. you should always rent a car with a proper company. So as I said, we're not experts. But if you want more advice about what sort of driving licenses are accepted, the insurance, what is provided here in Bosnia-Herzegovina, we have our own resident car hire expert, uh, Arzo, who works for Control Rent-A-Car. Uh, the link and the phone number is in the show notes. So if you're thinking of hiring a car, um, you can call Arzo or you can send him an email and ask him the questions. It's not expected that you take any business with him, but he will certainly help you. He owns a company. He's been operating the company now for, for many years for now. Over 20 and years. he will also help you if he does not have a car. He knows all the other companies. So he usually helps people to find a car, even if he doesn't have, you know, available cars. So yeah. he's very, very helpful for so that. Arso, even if you need any advice, he will give you the advice. Yeah. So Arzo is actually short for Alexander. So there's some information on this podcast for not trains, but planes and automobiles and i hope these tips have been um uh, useful please let us know but before we go and wrap up i don't know what is coming next so be prepared for me to be shocked at the end of every podcast tamara is going to either give you a couple of new words that you can practice that you can use when you come or maybe a simple phrase now i suggested one to her i'm not going to tell you what it is but What is the useful phrase? I think the first thing that you should learn before you come to this country is please and thank you. So please is molim vas, which is a nice and polite way of saying please. Molim vas. Molim vas. Molim vas, ein ticket to... Oh. So please is molim vas. Please is molim vas, yes. And thank you is you say hvala. So hvala. 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 So molim vas... Molim vas. And hvala. Hvala. Molim vas is and very, thank you. Yes. That's very polite way to start a conversation if you need a help from somebody. You say molim vas, please, and etc. So that's it for this episode. Subscribe to the Travel to Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast and get ready to fall in love with this heart-shaped country. Our podcast is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you really like this podcast, then please do leave a review or send us an email. The address, in, the address is in the show notes, as is our WhatsApp number. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode when we start to look at things to see and do around the city of Banja Luka. Bye for now. <laughs>